Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today we're going to spend some time together in a beautiful, nice activity that is really beginner, intermediate and advanced friendly. Uh, you can practice by yourself, with friends, with your kids, grandkids, if you want, you know, to have something to do during the summer when it's too hot to be outside, at least here in Utah, there are some hours so that you cannot really be outside. If you want to have something to practice with your kids to avoid that they spend too much time in front of the video game, this is the perfect activity for you. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you're new peruse around my previous videos. I posted uh, one video per week plus few shorts. I give you multiple ideas. And if you're really, really into a self artistic exploration, I really encourage you to do also my painting practice with watercolor. They are definitely longer practices, but they really guide you step by step uh, to understand and become a little more comfortable and familiar with the media. And you can always uh, post the video and divide it in three different sections instead to do it uh, only you know, in one time. Today activity is gonna be definitely shorter and the objective which means is the goal of this activity is not only to relax uh, have fun and practice on mindfulness so be really focused and present on the very moment and what your hands are doing on the paper but we can also review and exercise some fine motor skills and coordination skills and we are talking about we, we're going to talk also about analogous colors what those colors are how do they interact with each other and what is going to be the visual result that they give you for today's practice you need a mix and media paper if you have your journal i highly encourage you to practice in your journal or provide for yourself a journal if you're practicing on loose piece of paper please finish what you start regardless the result, regardless of if you like it or not, and keep everything nice and organized in a folder. Uh, we need a couple of markers. I would personally use uh, uh, a dark blue that in my, uh, like a, I use a brand that is called Shadow Markers, Shadow Art Markers. They are alcohol markers and you can find them on Amazon. They are extremely affordable, but still they give you a very, very good result. I really like them. If you want more professional, if you have more professional markers like other more professional brand, feel free to use them. But let's be clear, if you have Crayola markers, you can still do this practice and it's going to be fantastic. I will use a cobalt blue, which is like a, a dark blue. And then I will use a, a violet, which is called orchid, but I would say that is a light violet. These are analogous color, which means that they sit next to each other or close to each other on the same side of the color wheel. They are so different and opposite of complementary color, right? So I'm gonna talk during the practice and uh, because I don't wanna spend too much time in the introductions. And what else? Oh, an extra fine black markers. Any brand that you have available. If you have Sharpies, use Sharpie. If you have a black gel pen, use a black gel pen. Use what you have. If you have a micro markers, which are one of my favorite brands, they are professional, they are more expensive, use them. Remember, that my videos are meant to be uh, approachable, right? And uh, doable, regardless of the materials that you have uh, uh, in the moment. If you want to invest more money, then you will go. But remember friends that of course, the more professional supplies will give you a more professional result. But if you do not master the technique, even professional uh, supplies that won't give you the result that you need. And I feel that the process is always more important than the final product. So let's uh, get ready, pause the video, prepare your supplies and let's practice together. Okay, friends, this is the journal, my journal. Oh, we arrived at the last page. I'm gonna show you like I'm using these uh, shadow art markers and they are dual tip. So I will use uh, the uh, larger tip, the biggest one. So if you can see like uh, it will release immediately a pretty thick line, which is something that we want. In case you have just a marker with a regular tip, what you're gonna do, you're gonna follow my movement and you will do it just thin, but then you're gonna have some time, you're gonna spend some time to make your lines thicker. Okay, so you will go with a parallel line basically, and then you will spend a little extra time in filling it in. So if you have a large tip, use the large tip. If you don't, you can absolutely do the practice and it will come out extremely nice. You will just have to do one line first, 
second parallel lines and then you fill the space in between okay so now i'm gonna put this practice paper on the side and we are gonna start first uh, with the black uh, markers i like to kind of reframe a little bit my space because i don't want to do it too big so we don't have you know sometimes we don't have too much time and i don't want this activity to be super long i know that some of my activity are longer but you know what art takes time and we are always rushing for many different reasons and we are also very busy so hopefully when we practice art we should be able to spend some nice time together quality time right then if you have a smaller paper totally fine if you have a bigger paper if you want to embrace the challenge to do the design bigger go for it otherwise you're going to reframe and resize your space so nice and slow you're going to put like you're going to point to the markers and then we're going to go around in a beautiful curved and swirled lines all the way we're going to let it like go spontaneously we just try to fill the space in a way that there is a little bit of line everywhere in our space. So we are going to overlap the lines. You see, we can go up, a little swirl, back down, one more. And then when you think you're done, you finish. Now your line doesn't have to look like mine. Go with the flow. Just be spontaneous. My only advice, and what I say to students, is just always look at your hands, don't get distracted, and move it slow so you can decide the directions. Now we're going to do the same with our analogous color, and for me, my choice was a violet. Analogous color, as I was introducing you, are colors that sit close to each other or in the same uh, quarter of the color wheel. So they are different from complementary color, and now let me focus just a second on the line. In this one, we need to think a little more. We're gonna pass this when we see the empty space. So the design is not gonna be too busy in some area and not busy at all in other. We kind of be mindful. We are going to overlap here and there. We're gonna close this. I'm gonna go in the middle, maybe switch over here and bring it down. And that's it. For me, this work. Explore, you wanna do some more, do some more. The design can be busier, can be a little less busy. You do you and you experiment. And now we are going to start to work with our uh, markers and we are going to fill all these different sections with curved line in different direction to create a beautiful rhythm and an optical illusion of movement okay this is a wonderful fine motor skills exercise coordination skills and mindful so focus skills as i was saying the two complement the two analogous color colors they support each other because they are they belong to a similar color family this one is on the blue and this one is on the purple then they are immediately one after the other in the color wheel in other practices if you remember we talk about complementary colors which is instead are opposite in position on the color wheel for example red and green or blue and orange now, those colors also support each other very well because they contrast each other and they create a beautiful visual contrast that is very attractive for our eyes. This color instead, they support each other by creating a color cohesiveness and something that is smooth and nice to our eyes, so not too much of a contrast. Now, if you notice, I started to go in different direction and your lines, the closest they are, the better is the optical illusion. Also, if you can do a nice, nice curved, mostly in the corner at the edge of the lines, you're gonna have a better result. Now, if you are a beginner or a young artist or someone who has to practice a little more on fine motor skills, you will notice that your line might not be as precise as mine or they might be a little more far apart. It's totally fine. Practice. You can always go back and add a few more lines and then the more you will practice this type of pattern the better your lines will look like 
If you want to put some music in the background, make sure that you have a nice, good posture, that your body feel comfortable, that you're really enjoying this activity. And go slow. You can go much slower than I'm going or you can go faster. Remember that my wish for you is to really adapt to the practice and try them several times so maybe watching the video more than once if you need to do so and maybe play with some different elements for example you can do the practice this practice by choosing a colorful extra fine markers and feel the spaces inside and see how the color palette that you create is going to render your design or you can try, instead to use two analogous colors, you can use complementary colors, so opposite on the color wheel. Or you can use analogous, but on the warm side of the color wheel. Remember that if you don't remember all the colors in the color wheel, I did a video probably already 10, 11 months ago, when I paint, we can paint together a beautiful big flowers in which each petal represents the color of the color wheel. So in that practice, you will learn better and you can review the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, analogous, complementary, um, and warm and cold side. So a little bit of everything, basically. And you know, color is probably my favorite element of art. And uh, I like uh, neutral tones for clothes and furniture or design, but I actually like a pop of colors and I use a lot of colors when I do my own uh, art pieces that soon, very soon, will be also available for you to shop uh, in my channel. And I will actually open up uh, uh, my studio practice to you. So you will be able to uh, practice with me if you wish and understand a little more about my painting practice and my artistic process. So stay tuned because they are like a very nice uh, updates coming into my channel. The lines don't have to be perfect. Some of them might be a little closer to each other, some of them a little farther apart. It's totally fine and you see they create a beautiful visual effect of movement. This type of exercise, like repeating over and over a similar or a same gesture, are fantastic uh, for our brain. They are really therapeutic because they give us the opportunity to stay committed, stay focused and stay present in what we are doing. And we don't feel overwhelmed because there are not many decisions that we have to make. It's just repeating a simple act. And it's also a beautiful artistic and life lesson because the repetition of one simple action can really have a huge impact in a design and also in life. There we go. I really needed some time with you friends where I can just relax and focus on an art project. I just finished two weeks of summer camps that I taught in my school in Utah. It was extremely fun and rewarding, but also pretty tiring. And now we are getting ready to a little, for a little vacation. And unfortunately, yesterday, my younger son broke his elbow going with a skateboard. You love skateboarding and it's very good, but you know, it's a, a dangerous sport. Thankfully, it's just the elbow and it's a very simple and small fracture, but unfortunately, you know, it's not the best time of the year since we are getting ready to travel. And now he has, you know, he will have to put a cast and whatever, but it's okay, it's life. And we take it as it comes, so. It couldn't be worse. But today I say, well, I'm going to sit down and record a video for my YouTube family because I really need to spend some time with them, just enjoying a simple and still effective practice.
look what I do when I curve the corner. The more you're able to create this little like curve, the more is the optical illusion of movement. If I remember correctly, I published a little short of a very similar activity when I did it with my student and they loved it and I received a lot of positive comment on the short. So I decided to actually create the extended activity because for me, as you know now, or if you're new to this channel, you will notice that it's very important to explain you step by step. So you don't feel that you cannot do something or you don't feel overwhelmed and you can really appreciate not only the beauty of the practice, but also actually the steps that you will be able to learn and take and you will be able to create a beautiful piece yourself. So, of course, I, you know, shorts are something fun. They introduce you, they give you idea, they give you something nice to look in the immediate. But then I really like to do traditional practice because as I say, I don't want to speed up the video. I don't want to really uh, edit them so much or alter the video so much because I really want to explain how you do something step by step and make it approachable and simple and most of all understandable regardless of, regardless of your skill, ability, age, and art experience. I'm gonna actually do this direction. You don't have to, of course, copy the direction that I choose, make your choice. So you look what you have around and then you're gonna make the choice for the next space, the following space. This type of pattern, this type of lines with this curve, they remind me some seashell. And I love to collect seashells and I love everything that has to see with the ocean. So it makes me happy. I'm gonna do the other direction. If you're teaching, if you're doing this activity with kids um, that they are very young, make sure that you tell them that it is totally okay if their lines look a little farther apart and they are not as curved as mine. They just said to kind of be patient and invite them not to rush and maybe count, let them count the lines. So you're going to also let, have them reviewing the number and they will slow down. Sometimes when you are like, you know, it could be in this type of activity, you can feel a little frustration at some point, right? That you want to be done and so you start to speed and speed, but unfortunately, that will not give you the quality that we are looking for and not even the experience that we are looking for. So invite them, I say, to take a break. I prefer you to stop. You take your break and then you play the video and you keep practicing. Or even if you have to do it a halfway and then another, you know, you go halfway through one day and then the day after you finish, it's fine. But please try your best to always finish what you start. Don't practice on huge, big surface so you don't have to commit to something that might feel and be a little too much or a little too overwhelming. Just like be smart when you plan and when you prep yourself for the activity, but once you embrace it, stay with it. And so for the kids, if they have to count to one, two, three, they will tend to be focused and avoid the rushing. Very good exercise for our muscle, right? my hands, I already feel it. This way we're gonna go this way.
and this one we draw opposite. I hope you can see what I'm doing as clear as possible. I'm trying my best to be in a left-handed, you know. I think that I couldn't really change that much the position of the camera because I feel that the top view is still the best for you to see the colors and the design. I'm just trying my best to position my hands a little differently because sometimes as a left hand, I would try to, you know, I would do like that and I would cover too much, so I'm trying my best. To give you also very explicit the verbal direction. So you have the verbal direction, you have the visual. And hopefully my explanation are as clear as possible. starting to look really good. It's something really amazing to think about that two very simple elements such as color and lines can give us something so uh, nice, uh, pretty to look at, something so engaging uh, to practice and do together, such as this type of design. And once again, as we say, the simple things are, after all, the most important in art, like in life. This type of practice helped me so much uh, in uh, kind of dealing with my anxiety. I'm now doing much better, but I tend to be a very efficient person and I prepare myself extremely well for everything that I need to do or teach and sometimes I would think overthink over and over before during and after something like an happening or whatever and that really oh my it was really too much like uh, it was disturbing my sleep it was this kind of disturbing my resting time because I didn't have any mentally I was always a little anxious so I could not rest which is exhausting and so this type of practice they are also used in a therapeutic art along of course with counseling and other uh, therapeutic tools but since I opened this channel and I kind of push myself to practice once or twice per week and uh, the month in the month of January and February 2024, I publish a positive affirmation and a pattern and art because I really needed, and it was extremely beneficial. So if you also struggle with a little bit of anxiety or mental stress, I really highly encourage you to practice with my video January February. I match each art practice and activity with a positive affirmation. And uh, it's a sort of like a, an art yoga, if we want to call it like that. And I feel much better now. You know, I'm still very busy and I still like to plan and do a lot of stuff, but I take uh, things a little calmer, with a little calmer approach. And sometimes I would find myself uh, doodling little things, breathing in and out before taking action and you know it helped me so hopefully it will help you as well many of you send, sent me positive feedback and they share their experience and I'm so grateful for you all and I'm so grateful when you share your life experience or your experience with my practices it's so like uh, not only useful for me to keep going in a direction or maybe tailor my practice a little differently but also as a human I really feel reciprocal appreciation and compassion and you know this world really need compassion 
unity and love. So I really want to thank you once again for building this community the way that you are building it, a beautiful, safe and positive space when we gather together and we work on our creativity, on our skills, but also on social, emotional, you know, um, skills that we need to develop to live better in a community. And also it's so beautiful to see that many of us uh, still have pleasure in doing something such as art uh, and they still kind of reward uh, people to put beautiful and important content out there against uh, so much superficiality and vulgarity in the world. I'm so very proud of all of us and so very happy for what we are doing together. And look at us, little by little, one line at a time, we're also done in fulfilling this pattern. If you still have a long way to go with the pattern, don't feel overwhelmed or stressed because I'm almost done. Just take your time, keep doing it. Stop every time that you feel that you need to stop. Work around, you know, your schedule and your personal need. Remember that these videos are flexible for you, like make them as flexible as you need. So if you prefer to do it in two times, you will go until you can and you want, and then you will complete it another day at another time. Just please complete the activity. This is something like I have very few rules with my students, but they know that the one, the most important, that we always finish for what we started, even if it's not going in the direction that we expected or we wanted, we're gonna work as much as possible on that piece and we're gonna complete it and put it in our folder. Then we're gonna gather experience, right? And so we know what we don't wanna do it again or what we wanna do differently another time. Or sometimes, and it happens pretty often, the students end up to love the piece and they say, oh, I thought that it was coming very bad, but now that I finish, I really love it. And I say, I told you, I told you so. I think I'm gonna go this direction. If you're keeping an art journal, if you're doing your practices in a journal, on the back like of the page, you can even add a little uh, notes, right, about the experience that you had once you were doing, while you were doing something, for example, say, I don't, I didn't like this activity, it makes me feel frustrated, or I didn't like uh, how it turned out, but I did like uh, when I did this and that, or I really love this activity, I use this and this media, like a, write your own personal consideration about it, your reflection, right? So it become really not only an art journal, but really a therapeutic journal. I'm a huge fan of journal. I have art journal, personal journal, daily, you know, goals journal. I write, you know, I'm older generation we didn't have too much technology growing up so for us it was all writing 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 i think that i still have some pages of my high school um planner <laughs> and i used to do a lot of art in it as you can imagine so a lot of beautiful and cool doodle now i'm you can leave this outside like that i'm going to complete uh, with all lines. I don't know how it will go the way. We're gonna kind of find it out together. I'm just going with the flow and I feel the space with the same type of line.
and I forgot an S because it's plural lines. Oh my. English, English, English. <laughs> It's not that in Italian we don't have plurals or in Spanish we do have them. It's just that they are more familiar to me. At the end of this practice, we will all be masters of lines. At least this type of lines. Now let's go over here. shake it off <laughs> I'm telling you this is a workout at least for my hand tiny 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 and our final I think I'm gonna go this way there tiny little oopsie I know loop 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 You have noticed that the sum of my lines were not exactly perfect, right? But that doesn't mean that they ruined the design. Actually, they enhanced the optical illusion of movement and they are now part of the design. They give the design personality. I'm telling you this because I know that sometimes uh, we want to be perfectionists and we think that everything has to look like uh, I don't know, a robot maybe, something like a perfect, uh, all the lines, the same distances, and maybe sometimes you wanna go for that. And it is important that you reach that. But most of the time, at least for me, it is important also to embrace what happens, right? And you say, oh, 
one line you ruin the whole design no absolutely keep going and finish your design and you will notice at the end that the line is completely blended in that design the little imperfections became and becomes part of the design itself and it contribute to make the design special so don't despair And don't even get upset. Just don't ignore and keep going. Like sometimes we have to do in life. Ignore and keep going. This is not a competition. It's something that actually we do to help ourselves under different points of view. And most of all to enjoy. And off we go. All done. Now you can leave the design like that. If you want to go and outline this line, I'm going to show you how it will look like. It's not a huge difference, so it's really up to you if you want to do it or not. In this case, you will just go outlining the thick line that we traced at the very beginning. So now you see the way it's gonna look if you do the outlines and then it's up to you if you wanna decide if you wanna do it or you don't wanna do it. Go slow. Very carefully, follow your hand with your eyes, stay connected. one some of them almost look outlined already so we will just kind of fill in the little gaps that we might have between the markers and the black lines one point is tricky to remember what we did outlined already and what we did not one as I say this is something that you can do or you can completely skip it's not gonna change that much in the design just going to define a little bit more the differences between the lines that we trace with markers and the one that we did with black and actually look I just found the lid as a white space that I left empty <laughs> and we're gonna immediately fix that there we go curve this I think that I will do here And 
the glue and then I will consider it done even if I might have forgotten a few spots but And this is, friends, is our beautiful abstract pattern made with colors and lines. I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, guys, we did it. This is our beautiful design. We use two analogous colors. I personally use blue and purple. As I told you, you could have chosen different colors as long as they were analogous because it was a good opportunity for us to, to review what analogous color are, how do they interact with each other, what is the visual effect that we're gonna have on the design, and then our black extra fine markers to do all the lines. Definitely, I feel it in my hand. It was an extremely good workout. And once again, it's very important to keep our hands, you know, very nice and strong, exercise fine model skills and coordination skills, while also learning about staying focused, stay committed, finish what we start, and create something that you hopefully enjoy to look at. As I told you, they are very beneficial. They have been very beneficial to me and I really hope that they are very beneficial to you. Please consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned because there are many, many new uh, updates that are going to come up during the summer. I'm working really hard to create a, a, a beautiful, beautiful space and I'm really grateful for every single one of you. So thank you so very much and I wish you a fantastic day and I see you all very soon. Ciao a tutti!